YouTube, how the devil are you doing? It's Cool Game checking in again. I hope you are fine and dandy. So today is Friday, and on a Friday, I generally show you items that I've received in the post over the last week. So without further ado, let's do that. So this week is a little bit different as uh, comes the story so often. I didn't do a Friday show last week, so this is two weeks sort of stuff. A little bit of a bumper episode. Towards the end, I'm going to show an item and tell a little bit of a story about that. So you might not want to see that, you might do. Uh, but just so you know, it's going to be a bit longer because I'm going to waffle about that. So uh, what have I got this week? Well, it wouldn't be a Friday shows without a Kickstarter campaign, of course. This is my long-awaited Alpaca Gear Elements Tech Pouch in Multicam Black because Multicam Black. Been waiting for this for quite some time now. Quite happy it's come. This will have its own separate video doing a bit of an unboxing and a review type thing because I've got quite a few other items with it as well so they're going to have separate videos as well. Not one, but two Kickstarters this week. Not opened this just yet. I've been excited for this to come. This needs its own video. That's the Wesson Samler off Wesson. The Samler from Wesson. And that'll get its own video as well. Of course, it wouldn't be a Friday show without a Swiss Army knife. Or two, or four, or seven. So them few are off Bernard Neats of Bone Oak Knives. I get quite a few knives off him randomly. Go and check him out. He's a very nice chap to deal with. But one of these... Is one of the national parks ones. Didn't know these existed until I saw Bernard with one a while ago. Uh, this is the Rocky Mountains one, just to sort of build that series. I have got something planned with these. At some point, I will share my plan and show you what I've done with all the 53mm sacks, but that's coming soon. And then this one, you might just make it out in the cross. It is a metal cross, and it does say National Ski Patrol. This is something that the give to the National Ski Patrol apparently. A little bit of history in that one so I liked the thing about that, it's just a bit different. The unfortunate thing is is that it has the really old screwdriver on it and unfortunately the Phillips head has broke. So I can send it back to Victorinox and get it repaired, it'll cost about 10 quid, 10 pounds but um, I don't know whether I should or I shouldn't, might leave it as it is, I don't know, we'll see. So over in the Facebook group there was a discussion about noodles. And these things being hotter than the sun. Did say that I wanted to try some. I couldn't find them for sale anywhere. I did go and check. Uh, and then Mark Bush, who is a cooperator over on the Facebook group, said that he had quite a few packets going spare due to an ordering error. So he um, sent me a few packets of these, uh, four packets in total. So I'm going to try them. A couple of people warned me and said that they are very hot. I do like hot food, I like a challenge, so we shall see. It's all good fun, it's all good fun. So we had a random large box turn up this week as well. It had some items in it that I've traded for with a top cooperator, Dave Hudman. They arrived this week and he sent a few extra gifts as well. Uh, it was my birthday, so he sent a couple of extra niceties, which was nice. Uh, the first, being this lovely Kawiko Lilliput. I have wanted one, but I didn't realise they were so small. I knew they were smaller and rounded, and I thought they'd be perfect as a sort of EDC fountain pen, just to get me to write better, I suppose. It's tiny, but it is lovely. It's like the Fisher Space pen of fountain pens, essentially. Lovely. Thank you for that, Dave. He sent me one of these. I gifted mine, and we've been discussing them on one of the Zoom calls, and obviously decided to send me one. And then he sent me this very nice... Prometheus Design Works Ranger Eye, a nice handwritten letter which I won't show you. And then this, a huge uh, tiny Rebel Brewing bar tray, drip tray, bar mat, what call it what you will, which is very cool. That's the tiny Rebel logo. I do like this, and um, this will appear on some sack and sacks type things as well as what's the pint. Cheers to that Dave, very much appreciated. Whilst we're on beer and birthdays, I received a nice parcel from another cooperator and friend, Philippa. A few random beers there, 
that I haven't tried any of, so that's nice uh, that uh, I can give them a go. This Northern Monk festive star does look very interesting. I had seen them somewhere. I'm looking forward to trying that. Maybe, maybe this weekend. Going back to the old Victorinox Swiss Army knives, uh, I might rage quit Victorinox. I have two of the 2022 edition knives here. Bit of a story. On the Monday when they was released, I could only get the Classic SD, the others were sold out. Not to miss out, I bought the Classic SD, it's not the one that I wanted out of all three, but I would buy all three anyway. Then the day after, these came available again, I bought these two in two separate orders to try and avoid the import tax, which I did. If you spend over £135 year for tax, uh, you get taxed on them and the Hunter is 130 on its own so I did it in two separate orders they've arrived the classic SD that I ordered on the day of release is currently sat allegedly in Birmingham and I haven't got it it's not moved so I'm a bit it's not going to come I don't think that unfortunately oh well so the next item going back to Victorinox of course I'll first off I'll show you this you might not be able to make it out but it's a lovely handwritten letter from Connor, who is an amazing cooperator, does a lot of stuff for me, and a Victorinox mechanic. Saw this on eBay in the US, and I wanted a Victorinox mechanic to for a specific project. I wanted to put different scales on it. But I wanted to use a mechanic, and they're hard to get hold of now. They are discontinued. Found this one on eBay in the US with all the shipping and the import fees that eBay put on automatically it's quite expensive so connor bid on it for me and won it which i was very appreciative of and that has now arrived after spending a bit of time flying around the us and he also sent this which is one of the cool little zipper pulls he picked these up from russia so i don't know if they're hard to get hold of but the uh, the black and yellow is a really nice combination and of course we know that I've got a Swiss Army knife for that to go on straight away. So that's pretty much it for the Friday show us, apart from the little bit that I said I'd probably waffle on about. So first thing that I bought, yes, yeah, you read that right. It's a camp dishcloth from JSI. Now I had one of these, I bought one of these, I should say, back in 2012-13-ish. And I did a lot of outdoor type videos. When I moved house uh, a few years ago, this magically appeared in a box of moving stuff. And we call them the tidy up fairies in my house. They complained at how well used and probably dirty and poisonous and hazardous to health it was. And I'm, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Put it in a bit of bleach. Uh, magically it disappeared. The bleach was that strong. So I managed to pick myself up another camp dishcloth which I'm very happy about. Uh, they're a good, it's just a cloth with some sort of copper looking, but not copper, it's plastic uh, stuff on. And when you're camping and you're scrubbing your pans, it's just handy to have something like that. The next item along the exact same lines is the MSR dish and pot cleaner. I know, I know, bear with me, bear with me, please. So again, I had one of these longer time ago than I had uh, the dishcloth and I was camping in the Lake District not far from Keswick and it was um, a weird type of campsite you could camp on the actual campsite field in with other people in tents and cars and stuff or you could camp further up it was a bit up a hill it was a bit more like wild camping but not wild camping as close to wild camping without actually wild camping I suppose you'd say that's what I did anyway. But I still wandered off down to the uh, the pot wash to wash my pots at night after I've cooked my food on my uh, pan and stuff. Because I could. I paid for it, so why not? Anyway, when I was there, there was this bloke and he's scratching away at this pan and he's making a right racket. We're having a bit of a chat, having a laugh. And uh, he pulled his hand out of the water and he'd basically ripped the end of his thumb off. And there was blood everywhere and he'd been scraping it. Whatever he'd burnt onto this pan, he'd proper burnt it on and had ripped his nail. I'm there easily just do, 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 scrubbing away with my uh, MSR brush and uh, so do you want to use this mate and he's scrubbing away so oh, it's fantastic this it's fantastic the brush ended up getting covered in blood you might as well keep that now mate so uh, I gave this chap this uh, MSR brush they're only about six seven quid they're nothing uh, fantastic they're a nice little sort of they are flexible but it's rigid sort of plasticky 
type thing. It's the good for scraping pans as well as obviously brushing it. And this guy was like, I'd just given him the crown jewels. He was absolutely over the moon uh, with this MSR brush. But to be honest, I didn't really want it back because it was covered in somebody's blood that I've never met in my life before. I don't know who he is. But I was being nice and giving him the, the brush. Anyway, wandered off back up to my tent. And then about an hour and a half later, some random bloke comes up the hill to where I was holding a couple of cans of beer and uh, gives me a can of beer and then we ended up sat outside my tent having a bit of a chat watching the sun go down quite a romantic uh, time I suppose you'd say we had a beer and he uh, disappeared and what it, when we were uh, chatting this beer he'd actually been to another place that I like in the Lake District called Drink in Ambleside and he bought these cans and the cans were about eight nine quid so I'll class that as a win to me anyway I've rambled about that why have I bought two sort of dish cleaning type products to replace other items that I've lost or not no longer have. I bought a new frying pan. Bear with me. Yes, I have bought a jet boil summit skillet, I think it's called. It's a non-stick frying pan essentially. Now why have I bought a non-stick frying pan by Jet Boil? Well many years ago I had a YouTube channel that was my own YouTube channel, personal one. Uh, not this uh, one that I'm currently using that was uh, I did a lot of outdoor type stuff walking hiking a lot of cooking outside and then drinking outside not sort of park bench drinking meths type of stuff but uh, I did a section called the boozy bush drafter cocktails wine tasting type random crap I suppose you'd say but in the woods when I was hiking camping or whatever and then I did a leave no crumbs cooking type thing so I did recipes whilst out walking hiking whatever you call it and i enjoyed doing that and then i stopped doing that and then started doing this sort of channel uh, and i've not done anything since and i sort of miss doing that and i want to sort of get back to doing that the, the co-op part of when it was set up was that we wanted to do outdoor stuff and that's never happened for for one of another reason so i thought stuff it and i'm gonna i miss doing it i'm gonna do it so so i need a new frying pan because the one i've got isn't the best and you know need gucci kit if i'm gonna look like i know what i'm doing uh, on these videos so um i decided i was looking at the titanium frying pans i have looked at titanium frying pans for a long time i have a lot of titanium cooking kit but unfortunately i'm a bit dubious that they're actually any good some of them the coatings on them oh, and i've seen pictures of them after they've come off first time you've used them titanium obviously doesn't necessarily dissipate the heat very well because they've done thin sort of base pans so that it's not going to be that good whereas this jet boil one it's a little bit heavier of course but it's got it's like a traditional frying pan that you'd use at home uh, in the design to sort of spread the heat evenly so you cook a nice piece of steak in there for example and it'll cook evenly rather than having a hot spot in the middle on the titanium one i know what i mean i hope you do as well anyway that is it now, so hopefully you're going to see some sort of outdoor videos in the future, if you want to. No worries if you don't. They might come anyway. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that I've shown you, just put them down below. I should get back to you as soon as I possibly can. There will be a link up here to some other Friday Shows videos, should you want to see them. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you on the next one.